My body and my 
John, the first time we did that, we did it in Union. Three, two months ago, whatever it was, yeah. It just fit it so beautifully. It was just wonderful. wonderful. And Stacy does a, a right good, right good job. <laughs> Give her a little credit there. You know. Oh, welcome to Whalers Chapel tonight. We're glad you're here with us. I wish we had a whole lot more. Did y'all send out your invitations today? That's right. They're missing the blessing. They're missing the blessing. But we are glad you are here with us tonight. And in the wheel announcements, I'm not going to go into a whole lot. We've got a bunch coming up over the next few weeks. And, uh, I'll go ahead and we'll go ahead and announce this right now. Because it's something Brother Vic and I had talked about possibly doing, and probably some of the other deacons too. But if you remember in the fall of 2020, we did an all-woman's uh, revival. And uh, before we had to close down for COVID and all that. And uh, we're going to have one in 2023, the Lord willing. Yes. It's going to be kicked off on Sunday night by Miss Carrie Jones. Yes. 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 So go ahead and get that on your calendar. Now that will be the third Sunday in September instead of the second. Yeah, we can change this time because John's got crank mark next week. So uh, anyway, uh, looking forward to that. We had a good time two years ago, and I'm looking for a good time again, because we've got, John, we've got a lot of women, and it's, this denomination can preach as good as anybody, I guarantee you that, I guarantee you, God don't, he's no respecter of person, he don't care who you are, he don't care who you are, all right, let's get in our service then by getting our hymn books and turn, I guess a hymn book, yeah, 185, glory to his name, let's stand together and sing, 185. Somebody, welcome to the Lord's house tonight. That's always dangerous. <laughs> All 
All right, children, let's calm it down. <laughs> Amen. Praise the Lord. I love to have a good time in the house of the Lord. That's what it's all about. That's what it's all about. Before we get into our prayer time, we'll just go hand in hand with it, I guess, a little bit. Uh, I still have duties that I feel that I need to honor. One of them was to, I needed to go to Aiden this morning. The Lord bless me to be able to do that. And uh, it was kind of a, a busy morning. Busy around trying to get things lined up for Brother David Smith to pick up a chair and, and some other things. And uh, Sandra came in about that time, which eased a whole lot of burden, but I'd already made about three trips back and forth. And then John came in, he says, What to keep cool behind? <laughs> <laughs> but we talked a few moments, and, and then Sister Sandra said, Let's have prayer before we leave. Because I was getting ready to leave. And I told John a while ago, I said, by the time, you know, pretty soon after we prayed, uh, I had to hug Kay's neck two or three times before she would go home, but uh, which was fine. But by the time I got to Pete John's barbecue, John said it was smoke probably, but by the time I got to Pete John's barbecue, it was like there wasn't a worry in the world. Amen. And just that peace. And uh, I've been, been great all afternoon. It's been just great all afternoon. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Now, prayer time. Anybody have anybody we need to add to our prayer list? Uh, well, uh, Quincy Martin is one of the guys I work with. His mom is not doing well. She was admitted to the hospital last night, I believe. She's in Iowa, I think is where she's at. But he's here in Jacksonville. I think he's making his head that way. Travel the grace for him and his family and put with her up in it makes it awfully hard when the family's that far away. It makes it really tough. Yeah. When Mama fell this morning, she didn't break any bones. They haven't seen any signs of her. When they did a scoop scan of her brain for a stroke or anything, the only thing they find is low sodium. Okay. But she's in the hospital and been there for a day or two. Okay. She's in Newburgh. In Newburgh, okay. That pancreas is a bad thing when it hits. Uh, don't many people make it through it, I'm afraid. We had a 49-year-old lady that I rode here this afternoon. And if I'm not mistaken, she's got a first-grade little girl and a second-grade little boy. Oh, gracious. Mm -hmm. well, let's keep them in our prayers by all means. And wow. also keep Tracy in his prayers by all means. Yeah. <laughs> Others tonight. If not all, would it say? Everybody, let's welcome Miss Edna back with us tonight. It has been a whole night. <laughs> so good to see her. She's she's family. <laughs> she's family. Praise the Lord. It is so good, so good to see her tonight. Let's go to the Lord of Prayer. Heavenly Father, we come in our presence again right now in this hour, Lord, just thanking you for your blessings upon us. Father, all those wonderful blessings that you so continually pour out upon us that we're so undeserving of, Lord, but so thankful for. Most of all, Jesus Christ, your precious Son, our Savior. Father, that he was willing to, to hang on that old cruel cross, take the sins of the world upon him, take my sins. Lord, forgive my soul. Something I could not do for myself, that only, only he could. So, Father, we can never thank you enough for that. But, Father... It just suffice it to say we have come to honor, to glory, to praise you tonight through song, through prayer, through the message that Brother John will be bringing shortly. Father, we, we just love you so much. We love you so dearly. And we just thank you, Father, for all the blessings. But at the same time, Lord, we do think of those now who have as the need of our prayer, Sister Irene and uh, the, the young lady who has just died. And 
we think of that family, Lord, how tragic that is with the young kids behind. And there's just so many others around, Lord, that just need that special touch that only you can give. So, Lord, if it's in your merciful will, we pray you'll touch them just now. Heal, Lord. But, Father, we know you put us here as your handiwork. And as you have given wisdom and knowledge to the doctors and nurses and others, Lord, bless them as they minister. Because, Lord, yes, it, it takes all. Even though we know you're the great healer, the great physician, Lord, you rely on mankind to do a lot of the work. So, Father, just take them in your loving arms now. Draw them close to you, Lord. Bless them in every way. Father, we do thank you for all that have come this way tonight. As I've said before, probably in a congregation this size, even though it's not large, there's somebody that's not ready to meet Jesus. And Father, we pray that that night would be the night that that, that heart would open up, that you made her in before it's eternally too late. Because Father, one day, when we take the last breath, it's too late. There's no turning back then, or no turning in the other direction. So Lord, help us be where we need to be now. And for these and all of the blessings, as always, we'll continue to praise and honor you in the name of our precious Savior, Jesus, and all of God's children said, Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Ah. I mean, I felt good. Because <laughs> yeah. I hadn't been able to pray like that in a while, I'll tell you the truth. <laughs> uh, well, I think probably about everybody knows our singers tonight. They've been with us several times over the years. I won't ever get tired of them coming. Uh, Carrie Joe said a while ago, we're family. I said, you better believe it. We're family. Yeah, no doubt about it. So, Carrie Joe and Penny, y'all come on and bless us with what God's laid on your heart tonight. Thank you so much for the invitation. We were so excited about coming and being with y'all tonight. Because we are family, right? We're the family of God. And so... It's just a blessing to be with you. And a lot has happened between Penny and myself since we've been here. We've become Gammy and Grandma Penny. And so I want you to know I have a beautiful little girl, Hadley, and she is um, going to be a solo artist. And Penny has a quartet. <laughs> so she has one on the way. So and that'll make her four. That'll make her two girls and two boys. She's had three boys all her life, and she said, here's when I'm going to get some girls. I said, you're going to get them. When they get married, you're going to have those little girls. And guess what? They're coming. And we're just so blessed. We're so blessed. Are we not? Look at your neighbor and say, we are blessed. And we are so thankful to be in the house of the Lord tonight. So just raise your hands. Uh, just worship with us the way God leads you. You know, just worship the way he's leading you to worship tonight. Our first song is going to be Revelation song. And so if you would, we're going to ask you to join in a little bit later on this song. And just remember, just, just worship. Worthy is the Lamb who was slain. Holy, holy is he. Sing a new song to him who sits on heaven's mercy seat. Worthy is the slain holy holy is he sing a new song to him who sits on heaven's mercy seat holy 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 is the Lord God Almighty, who was and is and is to come. With all creation I sing praise to the King of Kings. You are my everything, and I will adore you. Oh, 
gold and rainbows of living color flashes of lightning rolls of thunder blessing and honor strength and glory and power be to you the only wise king holy 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 is the lord god almighty who was and is and is to come with all creation i sing praise to the king of kings you are my everything and i will adore you Jesus, your name is power, breath of living water, such a marvelous mystery. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty, who was and is and is to come. With all creation I sing praise to the King of Kings. You are my everything, and I will adore you. Sing it with us. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty, who was and is and is to come. With all creation I sing praise to the King of Kings. You are my everything, and I will adore you. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty, who was and is and is to come. With all creation I sing praise to the King of Kings. You are my everything, and I will adore you. Amen. entitled by his wounds and you know we all may be wounded in some way but Jesus has already he's he's the healer he's already healed everything all we have to do is trust and believe by his wounds We're praying for your healing, too. Yes, we are. Brother Ronnie. He was here for our transgressions. He was crushed for our sin. The punishment that brought us peace was upon him by his wounds by his wounds we are healed he was pierced for our transgression he was crushed for our sin the 
punishment that brought his peace was upon him by his wounds by his wounds we are healed we are healed by your sacrifice and the life that you gave we are healed for you paid the price by your grace we are saved we are saved he was crushed for our transgression he was crushed for our sin the punishment that brought us peace was upon him by his wounds by his wounds we are healed we are healed by your sacrifice and the life that you gave we are healed for you paid the price by your grace we are saved we are saved he was pierced for our transgression he was crushed for our sin the punishment that brought his peace was upon him by his wounds by his wounds we are healed by his wounds by his wounds What can wash away my sin? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Amen. This is one of Mount and Penny's favorite songs that we do because there is a God. Amen. There is a God, no matter what people say, there is a God that loves you and wants the very, very best for you. He wants that because he sent his son to die for you. Amen. All you have to do is look around, saw a beautiful rainbow going to carry Joe's, and then a few showers came. He's everywhere. But, He's but everywhere. Just All you have to do is take a look around. Amen. There is a God. Comes out of the ground. 
find a heartbeat on a baby's ultrasound in a few years here laughing don't it sound like a song stop and think about what you don't understand things like life and love and how the world began hear the doctors say you can't explain it but the cancer's gone amen there is a god there is a god there is a god how much proof do you need How this whole world's just an accident. But if you want to shoot that theory down, look around. Just look around. Yes. There God, there is a God, there is a God, how much proof do you need? Wonderful, wonderful. Thank you all so much for coming and sharing with us tonight. It's been great. Sweeter than the day before. I'm going to let you, page 325, we're going to stand and let you stretch your legs. But I did need to mention this before we do that. I spoke with Hank as we were leaving home, and he said his mom was doing about, about like usual, doing pretty good. Uh, I haven't missed going to see her so bad over the last few weeks, but uh, keep them in your prayers. You know, there's uh, a long road ahead, and Hank's got it all on his shoulders, bless his heart, uh, being the only child. And uh, so just keep them in your prayers. So let's stand and sing 325. Stretch your legs, then we're going to turn John loose for a while. We'll sing it through twice. A little bit louder on this second time through. <laughs> Like to hear. Ooh, all right, John, it's your turn. 
I'm through, brother. Come on, give us to us. I mentioned a while ago about having prayer before I, I, I left the office this morning. And uh, if I needed any more proof, that was it. That's right. if, if I had needed any more proof. God bless you, brother. Yeah, I, when I was, uh, had a minister's prayer breakfast this morning and um, met with uh, a lot of our Pitt County ministers, and most of them are retired. And, uh, but when I, when I left, I was on my way back to the press, uh, and as soon as I got where I could look between the bushes, I could see his truck in the parking lot. <laughs> and I thought, what in the world is he doing at the office today? And, uh, and so when I pulled up there and then, you know, and I, I came in and I was like, I knew how tired he was last night. And, um, and, and I, and I was like, I don't know what he's doing here at all, but he had good, he had good reasons. But I, but when I, when I turned the corner and Miss Kay was sitting there and, um, uh, Sandra was standing there and I took one look at him and I could tell he was really, uh, poured out at that moment. I said, I don't know if we're going to pray or we're going to call the ambulance, but one of the two, <laughs> We're going to do, probably might need to do both. I don't know what's going on, but, but we, we had prayer and it was, a, it was a sweet moment uh, there and it was my privilege to do that. Th um, just sort of some personal things to share with you. Thank you for your ongoing support of the Four in Christ. Um, we appreciate coming over here and singing for you folks and uh, your giving to our ministry and what we do. None of us, all of us have jobs. Well, well, some of them are retired. <laughs> couple of them work for the government. So, you know what I'm saying? But, you know, but for the most part, right? Yeah. Um, but, uh, some, so, you know, every, everybody works gainfully employed. So we don't, we don't get anything for doing that. So, uh, what you folks, uh, provided, um, this past week on Saturday, uh, will help get us to Arnold and then eventually to back to Richlands and then over, uh, back towards, uh, Farmville direction in a couple weeks. So, uh, thank you for your ongoing support there, as well as for the Free Will Baptist Press. Uh, thank you for, uh, as I mentioned last night, I, I've taken on the role of the president of the press and as well as editor. And um, it always does, uh, does me good to come in and see our magazines ready and books that you've purchased and other things. And thank you for your, uh, your continued support of, uh, of that ministry as well. We're doing great. And I'm excited that um, in just a few short months, we'll be totally debt free. And things are moving in the right direction, and we dug out from a really deep hole. But thank God that we things are um, things are going great. So um, it was a big hole; it was a crater, just about. So yeah, um, but we're but things are going well. So continue to pray for us. Enough about that. Isaiah chapter one, verse eighteen specifically. I will reference all of that this chapter, but I want to specifically look at verse eighteen tonight. Scripture says. Come now and let us reason together, saith uh, the Lord. Though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be white as snow. Though they be red like crimson, they shall be white as wool. Let us pray. Lord, I realize that this service has already been moved by your spirit. And I am well aware of that sweet spirit from the time I pulled in the parking lot to this moment. And I'm thankful for that. I'm thankful for the work that you do through singers and choir and through this pastor. And Lord, now it comes time for me, just me to do something. And I pray that something I do will match what you've already done. Amen. And I pray that you will use us and revive in us a spirit uh, that will respond to you. In Christ we pray. Amen. Amen. You know, the prophet Isaiah in this passage was ministering during a very turbulent time. It was a time that's not unlike some of what we might be going through on these days. According to Israel's history, uh, the nation had abandoned the way of the Lord. And God had been pleading with them and 
uh, disciplining them. We've talked about that last night. And I think about how God was working in their lives. And I just cannot imagine that a nation like Israel would be so fickle and so foolish that every time that God brought them through something, led them to a new place, gave them victory over a problem, whatever, or every time they would be real excited and then it just seems like just a few chapters later, could be days, weeks, years later, they end up falling right back into the same mess they were in before. And the fact that over and over and over again, they continue to vacillate back and forth between being faithful and walking away, being faithful and turning their backs on God. And all of that time, I just imagine that God got real tired of those men and those women. God got real tired of that foolishness. And he finally, now if it had been me, I would have said, you know what? I can do better with another group of folks. (laughs) But instead, he stuck it out. He stuck it out with them and he continued to offer them grace. Scripture says that the history of Israel and the recording of of that history is given for our admonition. And that if we will listen and think of what God did with those people and how they acted, then we can apply it to ourselves. So I want you to know tonight that even though that nation had abandoned God, had walked away from him as Lord in their life, and they were living openly in sin and idolatry, God didn't give up on them. See, the verses leading up to the text that I read to you in verse 18, in verse 2, it says that the people were in open rebellion against the Lord. Not just sin, but active rebellion, rebuking God, uh, speaking evil against him. They refused to acknowledge God, according to verse 3. And that spiritually, uh, it says that they were dumber than the farm animals. I don't know if any of you know any folks like that. I've been to Raleigh and Washington many times. And, um, and, I, and I, I know quite well that donkeys and, and elephants do have a tendency to be smarter than the folks I've met up there. But in verse 4, <laughs> it says that they had forsaken the Lord and it had provoked, the, had provoked God to anger. Verse 5 says they refused to respond to the Lord's constant attempt. And like I said last night, to, that even though God was disciplining them and calling them and wanting them to change their ways, they continued to... To rebel. They were spiritually, that spiritually they were sick and they desperately needed help. According to the same passage in 7 and 8, it says that the violence filled the whole land and that people were always fi- fighting with one another, filled with war and hate and discontent for each other. Verses 9 and 10, it says that in many ways they had become just like the ancient Sodom and Gomorrah. In verse 11 through 15, it goes on and says that their religious services were an abomination to the Lord. That word abomination, the Hebrew word, is something that it, whenever you smell something, taste something, or see something that makes you sick, that you're going to vomit. That's the background of the Hebrew word that we use for abomination. It is something that God looks upon and it disgusts God to the point that he was repulsed by it. When God looked at their behavior... When God looked at their religious services, it was not about God. It was not about His holiness. It wasn't about people's love, but that it it actually made God sick. Verse 9 tells us that the only thing that held the nation together at all was a small remnant of faithful Jews. You know, friends, we might think that this whole world and the nation and everything else is going straight to hell in a handbasket. But I can promise you this day that the scripture from the beginning to the end always says that God has a remnant. There is always going to be a remnant of people who remain faithful to him. And if we will remain faithful to him, he will always uh, make sure those people persevere. He makes sure that they will always come out of this. In the end of the scripture, it says these are they who came out of great tribulation. They are the people that God continues to hold special. And even though we might feel we are in a minority, even when we feel like everything else is, is turned against us, we must remain faithful no matter what because God has always had a people. God has always had a church. He's always had believers. And even in the middle of uh, religious corruption, there were still people that were holding on to that little part of faith. May not be perfect, 
may not be glorious, may not be politically advantageous, it might not be the greatest, but they were faithful. They believed. They held on to those nuggets of truth. You see, when I think of the things that I see in this passage, just this one chapter from Isaiah, it might we, we you might think that I, lift, I took it right out of the, the the Goldsboro News Argus or whatever Kinston's got or whatever. I mean, you know, I, you would think that would, I took it right off the newspaper and held it before us today because so much of our world seems to be going in this way. But in the middle of all of that sad commentary. In the middle of all of those crazy things, there's an amazing scene that happens. And I love it. These people have been blessed by God in so many wonderful ways. Israel should have been seeking God with their life. They should have been doing all that they could to mend their relationship with God. But instead, we see that the Lord is seeking His people. It's not that God threw them away. It wasn't that God turned His back on them. But that even in their foolishness, even in their sin, God was pursuing them. Constantly going behind them. Calling them. Beckoning them to come. Turn around from your wicked ways and follow me. Turn around and look at me. And with the invitation of contrition, as I said last night, to have that sacred and holy sorrow. To know that you're a sinner and you turn back to God, but then to come to Him and He would receive you and cleanse your heart. You see, that fact underscores all that we encounter throughout all the pages of the Bible. People seek things in this life. They are always hunting after something. They're always calling, looking for something. We're always, we have inside of us this moving thing that we just can't be happy with anything. I'm going to talk about that another night this week. But in this particular case, you know, people are seeking all kinds of things. But the reality is that God is calling all of us. And those moments that we've heard these ladies sing already, when you see that rainbow or you see that rain or you feel that, that, that young baby's heartbeat or whatever the case is, something calls us and goes, man, there's something more than this stuff. There's something deeper than all this stuff. And God takes that moment and flashes a light in our face and say, come to me. I'm here. Come to me. I'm calling you. Come to me. And sometimes that happens with patients at Vita Medical Center, ECU Health. They're laying on their back in those rooms, staring at the ceiling. And God comes and flashes moments of the divine. Maybe it's through a chaplain or a pastor. Might be through a nurse or a care partner or something. God comes in the room in those awesome moments. And you're reminded that God has been pursuing you all this time. God's been chasing you. God's been calling out to you. 1 John 4, 19, the Bible says that it reminds us that we know of, of the love of, uh, of, we know love because God has first loved us. Because He has loved us, we know what real love is. And it's not that warm, fuzzy, fluttery feeling that we get in our heart when we see our loved ones. It's not those kind of things, but it is an intense love that lets us know that we are complete. We are welcome, warts and all. We are welcome exactly the way God has created us. And He's looking at us and He sees the very best in us. You see, friends, God loves you immensely. And He is pursuing you Every day. You know, you might want to think back to maybe when you first met your significant other. And you probably think that, you know, you know, you, you know, guys, you saw you saw her across the room. You thought, man, she's really beautiful. Or, you know, maybe you're a woman and you look and you saw that man and you say, you know what? Hell, I really would love to have that. I wonder how much money he's got. <laughs> and, you know, whatever, whatever the case is. And then you start. You start pursuing it, right? You start calling your friends. You start doing everything you need to do because you just got to get with that person, right? And you dim, and that love motivates you to ask for that first date and eventually to, uh, to join together in marriage or wherever it is on, on your particular uh, spectrum of time. But I, you see those things and we know how much we pursue even the things on this earth. How much more will God pursue us? Because we are His prized possession. After all, we're dead in our sins and, trans, uh, and, and trespasses. We can't seek the Lord because all we know how to do is sin, apparently. 
Also, it seems like all we want to do, according to Ephesians chapter 2, verse 1, but Jesus came into the world for the sole purpose to seek and save the people that are lost. And I want you to know today that He is able to elevate us out of our sin and the miry muck of, of evil in the world and put our feet on solid ground. I praise God that He can take us who are totally depraved, that people that are totally broken, people that are cut off from God. And, and even though most people might want to think that their life is so wonderful, you don't know wonderful until you know Jesus. You don't know how great your life can be until you've given it to Him. You don't know what you're capable of until you have given your life to Him. You see that little spark of the divine that's inside of you, that spark of God that gives you joy and happiness and knowing that you can face tomorrow. You can face your most difficult days because God lives within your heart. You know the power of the Holy Spirit that's going in front of you and will light your path. You know the assurance of His inspired Word that gives you foundation and teaches you what absolute truth is. You see, friends, man will never come to God on his own. In fact, man will create God in his image. But God says, come to me. And if all you'll do is just look up, if you'll just take a moment and wake up, if you'll take a second and just open your eyes, God is right in front of you. My favorite example of this is in the story of the prodigal son. And there, after he's wasted everything, he's face down, maybe in a trough with all the pigs and everything else. And the scripture says, and I love the way the KJV says it, he came to himself. You see, when you and I come to ourselves, we realize exactly the truth. We know the truth that God loves us and that he wants to receive us. And we get up from our little trough. Of all the bits of God knows what that we've been feeding on. And we turn our face towards home. We move on to Him. And even though we might feel dirty or vile. We might live among wicked people as the text says. We know that we are people that need to be cleansed. We're people that need to, be, to, to come to the Lord and that He is constantly inviting us and calling us. That we have a desperate need and He's saying, if you'll come to me, I'll meet that need. You need to be cleansed. I believe it's absolutely true for us today to remember what this passage says. Because the first night was the invitation to contrition. Tonight, the invitation to cleansing. You see, the first point I want you to know. Is that the, there is an intensity of that invitation. The word come. Not just, hey come here. But it is an imperative shouting according to the Hebrew text. That it is bold and underlined. They didn't have that back in the day. But they would repeat the word multiple times. But the idea of, of calling one out to come and come now. Maybe like some of us parents or grandparents that when your kid is somewhere that they ought not to be. Or maybe some far off somewhere and you call their name and you say, you better get over here. That idea that God is calling us to come out from our danger. Calling us to come out from our foolishness. Calling us to come out of the world of darkness and to come home. To come back to Him. It is a command that God is reaching to wayward and sinful people. And he's calling me and he's calling you to come back to him. See, this is the part that I think is so amazing because God knows even when you're in darkness, even when you're in sin, God already knows what you've done. You're not fooling anybody. God already knows that you've, you've sinned. He already knows you're broken. He already knows that you need sa that you're saving. And so he's coming to you just as you are. The New Testament says that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Not when you got it together. Not when you were perfect. Not when you got your seminary degree. Not when you've been serving the Lord for however long. And none of those things. But while you were a sinner, while you were wicked, while you were vile, while you were in your doubts, while you were in all those things, He comes to you. And He says, come to me. Turn around and wake up. Come to yourself. And realize that all this time I'm calling you. Realize, come to yourself and realize that He still loves you. And He's reaching out to you. He's extending grace and mercy to you today. 
if you will repent. The amazing pl- uh, power of this passage is to realize the fact that the invitation still stands today, Amen. right now. Right. And that, that calling on your life, that invitation to come is right now. It's not just in, in, in Isaiah's day. Not just in Jesus' day, not just in Paul's day, but in our day that he is calling us, that God knows all of the sin that you have in your life. He knows all about the sin in my life, and he knows how far down in the cesspool of sin that we have sunk. And yet, even when we're wicked and evil and utterly depraved, he loved us enough, even in our sinful condition, that he calls us to come home. Man. You know, I listen to the words of Jesus as he uh, as he calls to lost people all throughout the Scripture. Everybody's worried about the end of times these days, aren't they? Talk to it seems like every time I talk to anybody, they want to talk about the revelation. They want to talk about the end of time. Well, friends, here's the truth of the matter: I don't know how it's going to be, and you don't either. The best thing you need to do is be ready when it happens, not worry about the rest of it. Okay, that's the point. Okay, but the reality of it is, and the beautiful thing that I love about the revelation is even in the very end, when all of the plagues are being poured out upon the earth, it is for the purpose of redeeming people. He's still calling people and he's saying, if you will turn to me, you can escape all this mess. If you will come to me, I, I, you, can, you can avoid all this stuff. And, you, and even that through that tribul- those tribulation times and those difficult moments of your life, just turn to me and I'll take you. Have you heeded the invitation? Have you come to the Lord for salvation that you so desperately need? Have you received Jesus as your personal Savior? Well, friends, I know that I'm literally preaching to the choir because you were up here a while ago. Okay? I know that. And I'm pretty confident that, you know, on a night like revival, on a night like this, we might say, well, you know what, preacher, we've already done that. But you know what? We may have made some of those first steps, but there may be Somebody that needs to restart something. There might be somebody that needs to re- rekindle something with God. You see, God understood Israel's condition far better than they did. And God knows your condition far better than you do. You don't realize the path you're on until God helps you see it. You know, I, I've, I, I've told some folks, I, I mean, we, our three children that we adopted from Brazil, um, they came from very traumatic backgrounds and we have walked to hell and back with some of them. And as we have gone to, to, to great difficulty, my oldest son finally looked at me and he said, Dad, I get it. I finally get it. I couldn't see what the drugs were doing to me. I couldn't see what my friends were doing to me. I couldn't see where I was ending up. But when he stood before the judge and he says, you're fixing to go to jail, that was a wake up time. But you know, there are times when we wake up and come to ourselves, and we realize just how much our sin has done to us. We realize just how far out we've gone. And now we are way past the breakers and we're wondering, are we ever going to get back? You see, friends, he reaches out to us and he calls us home. He sends out the lifeboats out to get you. He does everything he can to go out and all you got to do is wake up and realize that he is all you need. That He is the only answer to all the things you're looking for. He is the only way that it will ever be satisfied in your heart. He's the only way that you're going to get get out of this thing. He's the only way you're going to crawl out of this sin. He's the only way because there's no 12-step program that's going to help. You can do it with all those things, but you better have Christ first in your life. Because He will lead you in the right way. You see, for our lives, God knows our condition better than we do. And he takes that lost sinner and he thinks that he might be going on living on his own terms, but he doesn't realize what's happening, that he's just a pawn in the devil's hand. My friend, God knows our condition tonight. You're going to fool me, and that's okay. You're going to fool Pastor Ronnie, and that's okay. You're going to fool Victor, but that's okay. But I can promise you tonight, you ain't going to fool God. Amen. You ain't going to fool him because even though we might sit here and I'm writing some Sunday school literature at the moment where Jesus is talking about all these Pharisees and he tells them that they are just whitewashed tombs. Remember that those passages? You remember he says even in another passage, he said that you're, that you're just a, a dead body under the uh, grave under, and people are walking over you and you're hurting people. You see, you might fool a lot of people, but you haven't fooled God. Amen. You need cleansing. You need to come home.
The scripture goes on, and and my second point, I want you to know that there is an immediacy of the invitation. It's an imperative, but now it's immediate. That it's not to wait, but to do it now. Come right now. I don't know if any of you grew up the way I did, but when my parents used all three of my names, I knew what that meant, right? You were like that too, right? You know, when, when God calls your name, he's using all of them. Okay, and he's, asking, he's calling you to come and to come here now without any delay. Leave what you're doing and come and follow me. I love the beauty of the fact that when Jesus was walking along the seashore and he sees those disciples there mending their nets and he goes up to them and he calls them and they leave it immediately. I can't imagine what it would be like that my whole livelihood is right here and yet said, okay, and follow him. Incredible trust. In trusting in God that he would respond right now. Matthew getting up from the, from the tax collector's table right now. Leaving the money, leaving the receipts, leaving it all and getting up and following Christ. Catch me on the right day, I'll walk out without Jesus calling. But you know what? Amen, <laughs> I know some of you are there, I know. But when we are called by God, we are called to respond right now. Right now. I can't stand it when I ask somebody or call somebody or make an offer. And I say, well, will you do this? And they say, well, let me pray about it. I said, first of all, you're lying. We all know that. You're lying. Because if you were a Christian, you are always in the spirit of prayer. And you know that when God is calling, you must answer. So there is no delay in your response. You see, friends, when we realize that judgment is about to fall upon us all, it calls us to get up and move Right now, we need to get up from our dark, from our dark places and our sinful places and move right now because he's calling us right now. You don't know that when you walk out this door, what will happen in just a few short hours from now. You don't know what fool's going to come down that road and hit you. You don't know what will occur within your body that may claim your life tonight. There is no time to wait. Amen. You must respond and you have to do it right now. You see, it is uh, for all of those that if you are not right with God today, I don't know what you're waiting on. Because the rest of us know how wonderful it is. We know how much God loves us. And we are so much in love with God. And we want you to experience what we know. We want you to experience that joy of the Lord that comes in our heart. So you see, if you're not right with God, you better move right now. You better come home right now because he's calling you to leave those pleasures of your sin that's going to claim your life and come to the only one who can truly give you total blessing, total wholeness in every way of life. See, if wayward people could only see down the road and see what, they, what, they would, what they're doing or what the outcome would be, it would terrify them. If they could only see the effect that they're having on themselves or other people. If they could see it, then they would know how terrible their life is. Jesus is calling. He's pursuing every single moment and he's telling us to turn around. That person that is lost will see an eternity in hell. And they would see themselves in a place of eternal torment according to the scripture. Despite what the book says, brother, that we were reading a while ago. But you know, and th those things, God is going to separate the, the sheep from the goats. There's going to be that moment. So friends, there's not a time to wait because I don't want you on that side. I want you over here with all the blessed and the holy. I want you over here with all the believers. I want you here in the family of God. I want you over here where King is, is on the throne and he's living and calling and giving us power and glory in this life. It, I want you on our side to go along and walk with us because I don't want anybody to die and go to hell. But for that saved person, maybe it's you that have walked away from God. You might see, maybe you've seen the chastisements of the Lord in your life. Maybe you felt that firm hand of the Lord on your rear end to make you realize what you've doing wrong. Friends, I can tell you that that's the moment that we have to wake up and to realize that our sin has taken us to a premature grave and that if we are not careful, we will slip off into the oblivion and we will never come back to Jesus Christ. Amen. You see, friends, now is the time to come home. God knows how bad it's going to get. I told you last night, I remember 20 years ago saying, well, how bad is it going to get? Well, we're seeing it. 
And now we, I dare ask the question, how bad can it get? I don't want to know. I don't even want to dream about it. But I can tell you that I don't know how bad it's going to get. But I know that this earthly body ain't going to stick around for long. And I know that I'm going to go through pain and I'm going to go through suffering. I know it's coming. I know that everything in this life is, 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 all, is going to uh, come to a close at some point. I know that one day I'm going to come face to face with reality. That I am temporary. And I'm going to be gone. No one will remember John Hill ever. And it will be gone and it's all over. But I can tell you that if you know the Lord Jesus Christ in your heart, the only thing you're going to worry about is how you're going to spend your time worshiping the Lord. Amen. You're going to worry, do, uh, how, how much praise can I squeeze into an eternity? <laughs> you know, my friends, if you are not right with God this day, it's time to come home and come home right now. Right. Finally, I want you to know that there is an intimacy of the invitation. The invitation to come home now. But it says to come home now. Let us reason together. It's the legal terminology that gets us all there. It means let's sit down and settle this. Let's sit down and have a meeting of the minds. Let's sit down and read it. Let's sit down and talk about it. You see, Israel had broken their covenant with God. And they had failed to hold up their end of the contract. As God had initiated the covenant with them. They broke it. And he is bringing charges against them here in this passage, 1 through 17. And now he's inviting them to defend themselves. Well, let's sit down and let's reason together. You know, when we sit down with God and we have that moment, we say, you know what? We're face to face with reality and we realize how far we've come. We realize we don't have a defense. We don't have an excuse. We have failed. We have failed miserably. We are outside of the direction of God and we need to get right and we need to do it right now. You see, he's invited them to sit down and to face reality. They know they're in serious trouble. But God has the goods on them and he's calling on them to give an answer for their sins. And friends, there is a day when we will all stand before God. And for every one, of the, every one of those that does not know Jesus Christ as Savior, they will be asked to come and reason together. And it will be to come and to give a defense for why you did not know me. Why you chose to reject me rather than accept me. We will all have to, all those will have to give an account. But if you know the Lord Jesus Christ, that stamp on your life is all that matters. You see, the phrase, come now, is an invitation. But he's calling us to come and walk with the Lord. He's not inviting them to a debate. He's not talking them to come and negotiate. He's not inviting them to come to his way of thinking. He's asking them to come alongside him. To walk with him. As Amos 3.3 3 tells us. He's giving them the opportunity. You're right. And we're, and we're wrong. We're sorry. We're not ready to do it your way. It's not a debate. He's saying lay down your offer. Lay down your plan. Lay down your agenda. And come and walk with me. You know the scripture says in the New Testament. Jesus says come and my yoke is easy. My burden is light. Well you know as Christians. Sometimes we carry a lot of burdens. And a lot of yokes. And the thing that I've learned from. Working around a lot of folks in the country. I grew up at the coast. We don't know much about doing agricultural stuff. But one thing I've learned from a lot of good people in the church is that if you are going to have to shoulder a weight, you better get beside the biggest, brawniest man you know because he's going to shoulder the most of the weight, right? That's how it's going to work. I got a man in, at the Friendship Church. He's, he's a literal, a professional bodybuilder. Love this man. He's like a brother to me. Love him to death. And he is the, he's the, one of the biggest men I've ever seen. He is in great shape. Puts everybody to shame. And I said, if I was ever going to get in a fight, you know who I'm going to be with, right? If I ever had to move a piano, you know who I'm going to stand next to? Because I can tell you, when I step beside him, I know he has the physical power to do what I can't do. When we link ourselves up with Jesus, he has the power to do what we can't do. He has the power to walk with us when we can't walk anymore. He can, he can shoulder that burden and lead us to where we need to be. Friends, we need to walk together with Him. We need to come home right now and walk with Him. You may have responded to the call of salvation in your life. And I believe that's probably true for a lot of you. 
You may say, well, no, John, I think my spirit with God is pretty good. I, I, I pray regularly. I read my Bible, those kind of things. But maybe you're like me and you have some difficulty in the walk. You have some difficulty in making it every day. You see, friends, sometimes people leave the church and they say to me, you know, preacher, they, you were preaching to me today. You were stepping on my toes, whatever the case is. But, you know, the reality is, is that it's the Holy Ghost working in your life and he's calling you to come walk with him. He's calling you to stop whatever you're doing and to spend some time with him. And sometimes I have to schedule that time with him. Sometimes I've got to make an appointment just like I do with other people. And I got to say, this is my devotional time with God. If that's what I got to do. It's what I got to do. But friends, we need to walk with him. My friends, I don't know if you're ready to respond to the invitation, but it's an incredible invitation. It's a, it's a call to you that when we hear the, the voice of God on our life, that we immediately respond. I remember when I heard the voice of God in my life to respond. I was a child. I've heard God's voice many, many, many other times calling and pressing upon my life to change my ways, to change my way of thinking, and to do certain things with Him. When you are walking with Him, you can hear those holy whispers from God giving you wisdom and knowledge of how you can live. You see, friends, He has promised that you can be cleansed. He's promised salvation and eternal life if you will come. Even though our sins were vile, even though we were headed straight to hell, even though we chose every other invitation other than that with God, even though we were dirty and guilty, God has settled it all and He has come to offer us cleansing. I pray you'll take advantage of that. Some hear that call today. Some of you hear that call tonight. Some of you may rekindle something with God, but I want you to know that I want you to heed that invitation to come to Him and to do it right now. Let us pray. Cleanse me, O God, and know my heart today. I pray, Father, that that will be our prayer tonight. That you will look and to see that there is sin in all of us. And that sin is preventing us from being completely open with you. You're calling us. So we come this day, this evening, and we ask that you will settle our case. That you will look upon us and that you will cleanse us of unrighteousness and we will be pure and holy again. Lord, settle it tonight and help us to never worry about it again in Christ we pray amen you've heard that invitation you go to one last night we need to move we need to move you get your hymn books. We're going to stand together and sing hymn number 159. Jesus calls us. That's exactly what he's doing all the time. 159. If you have a need in your life, I invite you to come. Accept that invitation. Yeah, I was thinking about what John said there. You know, no matter some days how things seems, seem like you're close to the Lord and everything going good and then all of a sudden you think, wait a minute, I'm on the wrong path here. I'm going the wrong direction. Something just is not fitting. But that's why Jesus keeps right on calling. Praise God. Let's sing. Thank you. 
I believe we all can say it's been good to be in the house of the Lord tonight. Amen. Yes. If you can't, don't leave yet. <laughs> we'll talk about it a little bit. We'll do something. Brother John, bless you, brother, for not only tonight, but this morning. It was great. And tomorrow night, Lord willing, Brother Kemp Hired will be here with us for our special music. And then on Wednesday night, and I can't even remember her name, is. It's Stumpy's daughter. That's who it is. Uh, I remember it that way. I can't ever remember her name. Kay. Uh, we actually heard her at the uh, Eastern District Women's Auxiliary, I believe it was. And uh, Marie and Sandra said, we need to invite her. I said, I already have. <laughs> so we're looking forward to her. Be oh, yeah, Stumpy's got to come, of course. But that'll be all right. We'll have a good time with the Lord together. All hearts and minds clear tonight before we dismiss. I serve an awesome God. Amen. Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you for your blessings upon us. We thank you for this time you have given us together. Another time, Lord, we've heard your word proclaimed. Father, put on each every heart and every heart and every mind that we need to heed that call, that we need to come, that we need to do what you've asked us to do, Lord. But Father, just now we ask for a special blessing upon us as we're about to separate one from another. Lord, we don't even know what to ask for so many times, but it says the Spirit will give us utterance. Yeah. So Father, we utter just now. Bring us back again tomorrow night and let us worship together in the name of Jesus Christ, we do pray. Amen. 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 Amen.